In this lesson, we're going to start off with the fundamentals of HTML and CSS. HTML, of course, is our hypertext markup language. And then CSS is cascading style sheet. Here's the agenda. We'll begin by taking a look at what is HTML, followed by our conceptual understanding of cascading style sheets. Then we'll dive deeper into some of the common HTML terms so that you understand what the HTML structure looks like and how does it function. In comparison, our fourth agenda point is understanding CSS. How is it structured? How does it work? What can it do for us? And then finally, in conclusion, we'll recap the common differences, the similarities and functionalities of HTML and CSS. So here's the overview. Before we actually begin our journey to learn about building websites or doing some programming or development, the hypertext markup language, HTML, and cascading style sheet, CSS, it is important to understand the differences between the two languages. Not only that, we must be able to identify the syntax of each language and some common terminology between these two languages as well. So what is HTML? It's hypertext markup language. Gives content structure and meaning by defining that content as, for example, headings, paragraphs, or images. CSS, or cascading style sheets on the other hand, is a presentation language created to style the appearance of content. For example, fonts or colors. So there's a distinct difference between HTML and CSS. So elaborating on the differences between HTML and CSS, the two languages are independent of one another. They may look alike, they may function alike at times, but they are independent and should remain that way. CSS should not be written inside of an HTML document and vice versa. So as a rule, HTML will always represent content and CSS will always represent the appearance of that content. Okay, so you ought to remember the basic difference and how to keep these two scripting languages separate. Moving on to common HTML terms. The three important and most common terms regarding HTML you should be familiar with are elements, tags, and attributes. So we're going to take a look at each one of these in greater detail. What are elements, what are tags, and attributes. And the objective is for you to understand the fundamental concept of HTML and to identify HTML language. So elements are simply the designators that define the structure and content of objects within a page. Some of the more frequently used elements, for instance, include multiple levels of headings, such as identified by H1 tag through H6 elements, or the anchor tag, the div, span, strong, and there are hundreds of them. Elements are also identified by the use of less than and greater than angle brackets. So every time you see the angle brackets surrounding the element name, this means that they are identified as being elements. The next important concept in HTML is tags. The use of less than and greater than angle brackets surrounding an element creates what is known as a tag. Tags most commonly occur in pairs of opening and closing tags. So whenever there's an opening tag, there has to be a closing tag. An opening tag simply marks the beginning of an element. A closing tag marks the end of an element. As an example, an anchor link, for example, will have an opening tag of A within the angle brackets and a closing tag of backslash A within the angle brackets. And these brackets are sometimes interchangeably referred to as less than sign or greater than sign, so you ought to keep that in mind as well. And then the third element is the attributes. Attributes are properties used to provide additional information about an element. So for instance, the most common attribute include the ID attribute, 
which simply identifies an element, the class attribute which classifies an element, or the SRC attribute which specifies a source for embeddable content, such as when we insert images onto our web page, the HTML used will contain the SRC attribute. And similarly, the href attribute, which provides a hyperlink reference to a linked source. So here, for instance, an example such as an anchor tag that starts off with the a href and then provides a link to a certain website. And then, of course, our closing brackets with the backslash anchor tag. So here's a quick recap and further elaboration of the HTML structure. So the first is the element. The middle part is our attribute. And then of course, our tag that closes upon the elements and the attributes, okay? All right, moving on to CSS, the cascading style sheet. In addition to HTML terms, there are also a few common CSS terms you will want to familiarize yourself such as selectors, properties, and values. And as with the HTML terminology, the more you work with CSS, obviously the more sense terms will become second nature to you. So first, the selectors. As elements are added to a web page, they may be styled using CSS. A selector simply designates exactly which element within our HTML to target and apply styles to, such as you may want to change the color, size, and position. Selectors may include a combination of different qualifiers to select unique elements. So for example, you may want to select every paragraph on a page or simply just a specific paragraph on a page. Within cascading style sheets, selectors are followed with curly brackets, which encompass the styles to be applied to the selected element. So anything that falls within those curly brackets is where styles will be applied to that particular element. Properties. Once an element is selected, a property determines the styles that will be applied to that element. So property names fall after the selector within the curly brackets and immediately preceding a colon. So for example, you can use background, font, size, height, width, and so forth. Values within cascading style sheet. So far we've selected an element with a selector and determined what style we'd like to apply with the property. Now we can determine the behavior of that property with a value. Values can be identified as the text between the colon and the semicolon. So for example, in this small CSS block, you can see the element, the property, and the value. P being the element, color being the property, and of course our value is 16 pixels. PX stands for pixels. So in conclusion, just think you now know the basics of HTML and CSS. As we continue and you spend more time writing HTML and CSS, you'll definitely become more comfortable with the two languages. To recap, so far we've covered the following. The differences between HTML and CSS, so you have to keep things separate and understand that these are two independent languages. Getting acquainted with HTML elements, tags, and attributes. And with cascading style sheet, we talked about selectors, properties, and values. So hope this helps, and let's move to our next lesson.